Hi there. Now here we've got a question on resultant forces which you might like to try. If you haven't had a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video and when you come back I'll take you through the work solution and methods involved. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So we've got these forces P and Q acting at 120 degrees and we're told that the force Q is x newton so I just mark that on as x newtons there and the force p here is 20 newtons and there's this resultant force r of 3x newtons and it's got to act somewhere between these two forces here if it's a resultant now I don't know which direction it's going to act and it doesn't really matter you can just put it anywhere in here okay I'm just going to put it say out here and we'll just say that that is R and it's equal to 3x newtons now in order to solve this problem in order to find out x what I'm going to do is build up a triangle of forces something like this We'll start with Q, okay, and the Q is horizontal, so I'm marking the force Q, okay, there. We'll say that this is X, and then we follow this with this component. And when you follow something in vectors, it's going to be from the end here. So from here, we've got this force P of 20 newtons, which is inclined at 120 degrees to the horizontal. So if I extend that there and produce that out there, that's going to be P. It's not totally parallel with that, but that was the intention anyway, okay? So that's going to be 20 newtons. And then these are our components, and we then get our resultant, which is R, going from here to the end there. So something like this. Again, it doesn't look drawn to scale. If this is x, this is meant to be 3x, okay? But uh, nonetheless, let's just work with the trigonometry of the uh, triangle. What we've got in here is an angle then of 120 degrees. And knowing basically the three sides of the triangle, it does suggest that I would want to use the cosine rule. So I need an angle, and this angle in here would be 60 degrees to make us up to the 180 degrees. So by the cosine rule, let's just put it up here. I'm assuming that you're familiar with the cosine rule. If not, do check it out on my website. But what we would have is the side opposite the angle that we're going to use, the 60 degrees, that side squared, so it's all of 3x all squared, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So that would be 20 squared plus x squared. And then it's minus twice the product of these two sides. So that's 2 times 20 times the x. And then it's times the cosine of the angle that's opposite this side. So cosine of 60 degrees. So if we clean this up, what we've got here is 9x squared, and then we've got 20 squared, which is 400, and then plus x squared, and as I say, 2 times cos 60, 2 times half is 1, so you're just left with minus 20x. And what we've got here is a quadratic equation. So I need to rearrange this, make it equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is take the x squared from both sides. So you've got 9x squared minus x squared is 8x squared. Then we've got to add 20x to both sides. So that's plus 20x and subtract the 400. And that will equal zero. Now I can see that I could divide everything through by 4. So if I divide by 4, we're going to get 2x squared there plus 5x minus 100, and that's going to equal 0. Now normally I'd want to factorise this, or I could use the quadratic formula, but with them asking us to find it to three significant figures, it's a clue or hint that this is not going to factorise. So 
We'll use the quadratic formula, and so therefore we're going to have x equals minus b, so that would be the minus 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's going to be 5 squared again, minus 4ac, so that would be 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is minus 100. Just squeeze that in there. And it's all divided by 2a, so that would be 2 times the 2 there. Now if you work this out on your calculator, you should find that you get 5.930. I'm taking the positive value. Taking the negative value is silly because it's going to be minus 5 minus another value and clearly x isn't going to be a negative value. So just going to say therefore x equals that since it's got to be positive. And if you round this to three significant figures it'll be 5.93 to 3sf. Okay so I hope it's given you some idea how to do that.